What life lesson did you learn that you will never forget and when did you learn it? Learn to pick your battles wisely. Some things just are not worth fighting. Not everybody who speaks in a pleasant way to you is your friend. My best friend passed away a few years ago and I learned two life lessons. 1. Never keep people in your life if they don't love and respect you as much as you do them. 2. Never take for granted the time you spend with the people you keep. It could be over any day. You don't like everybody. So don't worry about everybody liking you. Of course. Be respectful to everyone you meet. But don't bend over backwards to please all of them. You don't ever truly know another person. Unless you can take up residence in their head. You'll never be privy to their true nature. Learned this through the process of growing up and losing friends those. It's not always malicious. Sometimes you latch onto the idea of a person rather than who they are. It'll eventually drive you apart as you realize that there is incongruity between who they are and who you think they are. My dad taught me as a teenager that relationships should be easy. Biggest and best lesson I've ever learned. Relationships should not be filled with drama but with friendship and respect. Really helped me choose who to be with. Now I teach my daughters the same thing so maybe they can prevent being in a painful relationship. If you're right but you're obnoxious about it. People won't see you as the good guy. Took me until the end of grad school to figure that one out. One time I got a flat tire and it was raining. I kept turning right to remove the tire and a guy in a bike stopped and just said lefty loosey righty tighty and just left. I never forgot it. It's not life changing but it has helped me a lot in life. Everyone is facing a battle you know nothing about. You can delegate authority. You can't delegate responsibility. Been a mantra my mom has spoken since I was a kid. You'll never be able to please everyone so don't make your life revolve around being accepted by everyone. I was 21 when I learned that just because you've been friends with someone a long time does not mean you're obligated to stay friends with them forever. If you're at the point where you dread being around them, leave. No amount of history is worth your peace. Don't say damn it on the internet. Still working on it. Some people, most people, have families who love them and support them. But some people don't and they don't know that it's terrible because it's just normal for them. It took me 32 years of life. 4 years working with severely traumatized children and 2 years of therapy to realize that I too was traumatized from day 1. You can't fix another person no matter how long you stay with them. They have to want to treat you better and want to be better themselves. And going back to them only makes them think you'll stay no matter what they do to you. Prove them wrong. Edit. Thank you for the awards. I uh. Don't become a walking charity. When I was in my early to mid 20s, I had a lot of friends who were falling on hard times or needed various types of help. And I was only too happy to help. I had the money. I had the time. I would do anything for them. Not one of them repaid, financially, or otherwise. Instead, I was just taken advantage of, left, right and center. It all ended when I suggested a friend of mine who broke up with their partner and had no place to live come stay with me. Next thing I knew, they were inviting their friends over all the time. Often without my permission. They weren't contributing a penny to the income of the house sold. Their new partner soon moved in. And my house basically became a DOS house. And they became a mean-spirited, emotionally abusive asshole who made my life miserable in my own home. Now, I offer advice only. If you need financial support, you can go to the council. If you need housing, you can go to the council. If you want me to provide either of those things, you can bugger off. It is better to be alone than to be surrounded by those that hate you. Lesson I learned though I would rather ignore it, but it might help someone else. People treating you poorly is a reflection on them, not you. My brother taught me this after I got dumped when I was 16 and my best friend banged my ex the next day. Never refuse when someone offers you a breath mint. My grandfather after I declined a breath mint from him. Not everyone at work is and wants to be your friend. Some just pretend and then duck you over. Learned that doing my apprenticeship and found the same it in almost every other company I worked for so far. When I was about 9 years old I used to bully a lad in my class. 
I felt like a tough guy because he was bigger than me. I bullied him because he came from a poor family but I'd always had a wealthy family. Until I was around 9 years old. My dad's alcoholism escalated and cost him his job and destroyed our family. I bullied that lad out of anger because of what I was going through and then one day he beat the it out of me. Our head teacher, principal, made us sit outside his office for a whole day together. Just the two of us. I quickly realized how much I upset him and we became friends. When I was in high school, my mom and I took a day to go church shopping in a new part of town. We must have gone to 5 services that day. Some were fun and lively. Some were quiet and reserved. But one in particular really stuck out to me for being so skooky. It was October, and the preacher was starting his sermon to the room of 40 people with Halloween is right around the corner. Who here celebrates Halloween? I was the only person to raise my hand. The preacher goes good, because Halloween is celebrating the devil, and we don't do that here. At this point, I quickly drop my hand as people give me weird looks. My mom then goes by the way, it's not a good idea to volunteer information to a group of people you don't know. I learned that I need to wait until I understand at least the basic dynamics of a group before sharing anything about myself. In these cases especially, it's better to be quiet and anonymous than to stand out and be a target. We never ended up going back to any of the churches we saw that day, though. Time is the most valuable resource on the planet. Lesson learned. Don't step on random wood scraps during a renovation or you'll end up with a nail in your foot. Date learned. 3 hours ago I. Uh, that my mental illness disorder is not my fault. But it is my responsibility to maintain. Don't hang on to your mistakes just because you spent a lot of time making them. Time invested is a myth. Somehow my parents imparted to me life was a pie. If somebody got some, I got less. That if I wasn't doing something impressive or winning at something, I was failing. I thought the way to be valuable and get people to like me was to achieve more. Prove how smart I was. And one up them. You can imagine how that goes over, when people predictably didn't like that. I thought it was because I wasn't achieving enough or seeming smart or talented enough. So I'd get even worse. It's hard to undo such an ingrained mindset and to admit shortcomings and share vulnerability. But the gradual life lesson has been not to try to impress people. Not to be ashamed of your true imperfect self. But to listen to people. Share with them. And be open. Honest vulnerable. Edit to add, not a zero-sum game about physical or material things. More like attention and emotional things. My parents certainly never actually literally told me that, either. It's just some weird translation my brain did somehow. Most people's moral integrity isn't nearly as bulletproof as they believe it is. And often, through no fault of their own, we all have certain vulnerabilities that can make us do or say things we had previously thought were below us. Whether it be trauma, desperation, loneliness, etc. Listen to your body. For years, I pushed myself to my physical limits. I went without sleep, skipped meals, stress ate, often had emotional breakdowns, etc. You know what eventually happened? Multiple mental illnesses emotional disorders, unexplained chronic pain, unexplained neurological failures. My body literally started shutting down to slow me down and force some self-care. It's taken years of prioritizing my health, and I'm still struggling with lesser remainders of those issues. Take it from me. Please. Please. Please listen to your body. When your body mind is tired, rest. When you're hungry, eat intuitively. When you're stressed, Find an effective way to decompress, journal, go on a walk, talk it out with a person you trust, exercise, etc. When you already have too much on your plate, say no. I know it can be easier said than done, but it's a worthwhile investment in yourself. You are worth it. I was doing forced landing practice in the training area in a Cessna 152 era but with my instructor, on the way back to land. He asked me this question. What will you do? If the engine catches fire? I looked at him. And said jump out. He said. No. You just control the plane. You you're the plane to get the fire away from the cockpit. And just keep flying. You forget about the fire. And do what is within your control. I looked at him. 
stunned, and said that's ducking profound Steve. I promptly took that advice and applied it to every aspect of my life. Don't worry about things that are outside your control. The world is not changed by your opinion it is changed by your example. You can be the most competent, hardest working, most dedicated employee in a company, but the promotions are most likely to go to the people who have made a personal connection with the boss. I learned that at my first job, and it's been true ever since. It's why I'll never homeschool my kids so we could give them a much better academic background, but the interpersonal skills they develop in school will benefit them more. Outside of my family, there is a very small portion of people who truly care for me and think about me without being prompted to. Always make time for loved ones. Time is not on your side. I learned this. Too late. After my grandma died, I was always working or studying and said next week I am going to visit grandma. Next week I'll give her a call. Next weeks. I saw her at the family gatherings like birthdays and such if I was able to make them but that's still different than going by her house and spend time together. The moments I did that it was nice and we laughed so there wasn't a reason to not visit grandma. Always sweet and even when I was in the 30s she gave me a bag of candy when I left. One year I was too busy, read selfish, and hadn't visited for months. I wasn't aware it has been months. That was after I checked how long ago it was. September was the last visit and in December she passed away. I couldn't make time for 3 months. Not a single day I could spare a few hours to visit Kaur's career and I'll go next week. This is more than 10 years ago and it still hunts me at times. She was always understanding and be like yeah I know you youngsters are busy and need to work hard and don't have it as easy as we. Even though she went through World War 2 and needed to walk 2 provinces for foods she considered that they had the easy life. I always thought I had enough time when I was done with insert something here. But always something else turned up. Next week I'll go was the worst thing I had told myself and I wished I spend way more time with grandma. It made me change everything. I now only work 3 days a week and spend the rest of the time on my family and friends. Make sure to give regular calls and make sure I can be at whatever is needed. Sure working 5 days a week and having more money for fun is nice but a bigger car or a bigger house or another vacation does not bring back time. Do I need a Ranger over 4x4 that costs 8 times the price of a Ford Fiesta? No. Do I need a house with 8 bedrooms? No. Do I need time? Yes. Time is all I wanted. Time is what we get in limited quantity. You can try and make changes in spending less or make more money. But you can't make more time. There is 24 hours in a day. Spend them wisely and don't think others have the same time left as you. The biggest lie I told myself was that I didn't have the time. I had the time. I just managed it badly. My grandma was 89 so she was on borrowed time but it could as well be my wife who I take out for dinner next week but gets ill or an accident. You don't know what it is you have until it's gone. Edit. Our thanks for the awards and all the nice replies. Even though I changed my life I went to bed pretty sad after I wrote this but this lifted my spirit. Happy it helps some of you and hope you all get to spend the time you want. A shoe that pinches will always hurt you. Essentially meaning don't revisit past relationships. Don't sit in the first row of a horse drawn carriage. Horse farts are no joke. Not even trying to be funny. We thought we were going to pass out. It's okay not to like everyone. Growing up, I was always told I should be friends with everyone. Even people who drove me crazy with their drama. While I try to be kind and considerate to people, I have learned it's okay not to like someone. I don't have to be their friend. If you don't ask, you don't get. Worked as an admin for salespeople and OMG did they get over on people. Demanded things from everyone that they had no right to. But they usually got what they wanted. I learned to say no to them and stick to it. And I learned to make my own demands. Sometimes I got what I wanted and sometimes I didn't. But I never received anything I wanted but didn't ask for. Does that make sense? Always ask. You just might get it. To not care what other people thought of me and my life choices. I learned this when I divorced my abusive husband. So many people in my life at the time thought I was so wrong for getting divorced. 
however. They weren't the one living with a control freak and walking on eggshells to avoid getting beat and then getting beat anyway. None of those people are in my life anymore and haven't been since my divorce. Relationships are like a fart. If you have to force it, it's probably it. Other people's opinions of you are not your business. I learned it way too late and I am still wrestling with it sometimes. Use a library for everything you can. Textbooks. Movies. Games. Music. I hope all these would help. Are frugal. Are discounted products. Are freebies. Are freebies. Are poverty finance. Are last presse deals. Budgetbytes.com. Sihab. Gives free access to download almost any paper. Libgen. Download almost any textbook as e-copy. A huge library online free. Free Harvard lectures available online. Sometimes even if you are right, you can still be wrong. Being right can be used as a weapon to hurt people. Sometimes people need sympathy. Sometimes people just need you to be quiet and listen. You can love a person and hate the things they do. My dad did a lot of bad things. And even knowing what he did when I grew up, I can't help but remember the good parts of him and love him. Always give your family and friends a loving word and a hug before you leave their presence. Because you don't know if you'll ever see them again. I learned it today when I went to my aunt's apartment and she was dead. The guilt will eat me forever. I worked in an after school program for a bit. There was a kindergarten girl who was supposed to be doing her homework, but was slacking off and had not been doing well all day. I was kinda hard on her about being off task and she totally went off on me. She said, you have no idea how hard it is. I have to get up early every morning so I can be at school by 8. I have grown ups telling me what to do all day. Then I come here, and I have more grown ups telling me what to do. I have to do my homework and then finally when I go home at 6 all there's left to do is eat dinner take a bath and then wake up the next day and do it all over again. It was a good reminder that being a kid can often be incredibly difficult. Especially since you almost always have adults telling you what to do all the damn time and have very little to no choice in how your day goes. I did my best to make things more fun and offer more freedom after that. Better regret stuff that you did than regret not doing it. Learned that 10 years ago when I decided not to confess my love for someone I liked a lot. I'll never have another chance. To always wear a helmet when riding a bike. I came off it when I was 9 or 10 and I hit the ground so hard that the brand new helmet broke in half and I couldn't walk for about a week. Luckily I fell off in front of an aura medic's house and I was with my cousin so I was okay but if I didn't wear that helmet I wouldn't be here today. Working in the justice system has made me rethink my understanding of good people and bad people. I think most of us have the potential to do monstrous things. Given the right set of bad circumstances and strategically applied pressure. Happily, though, it's not a foregone conclusion. The grass isn't greener on the other side. It's greener where you water it. Relationships. Career. Everything. Don't give up and throw things away cause it gets tough. Fix it and make it better. Or put into it and grow what you want. You can always take more ketchup. But you can't put it back if you take too much at once. Well technically, you can put it back. But not easily. I learned this from my mom as a child. She wasn't trying to be profound or anything. But little did she know that was my first lesson in entropy. It's better to be delicate in all situations in life than to go too big too fast. Think about whenever you've regretted saying something immediately after saying it and this little saying could save you in the future. Don't hold someone you truly love up too high. It's a long fall and your heart breaks the entire time. One who does nothing but wait for his ship to come has already missed the boat. Learned it about 30 seconds ago in a fortune cookie. Seemed relevant. When someone shows you who they are, especially if they show you repeatedly, believe them. I had a ex I caught lying multiple times, suspected of cheating multiple times, generally showed me I wasn't as important to him as his good times were. Surprise surprise a year later when he dumps me and I find he's been cheating and lying for our entire relationship. The goal is to be rich, not look rich. Learned it pretty late, but I consciously keep it my mind now. Expecting enough love from others to have a sustained income of love won't work. 
Love yourself and you always will be loved unconditionally. The realization of this was huge to me. In the past I tried so hard to appeal to everyone around me, work, family. But one day I asked myself, what is it that I need right now? The answer was love. I realized that I was always trying to appeal to others by being nice. If I can be nice to others because I wanted love, why can't I be nice to myself? So I changed my behavior towards me, learned to say no, and after that my world changed completely. 71 years here, I got dumped spectacularly at 18. Best life lesson a young cat could receive. Lesson? You are not the center of anyone's universe but your own mind. There were refresher courses along the way. If you think it could never happen to you you're wrong. It was a hard and sad lesson to learn. Found out I was pregnant. It was unexpected. But very wanted and we were so excited. Three miscarriages later and still no children. Infertility sucks. Not a statistic I want to be associated with. If you can do it under 3 minutes, then do it immediately. That whatever hurts the ego heals the soul. A lot of my depression, anger and sadness was caused by me being too afraid to hurt my pride. Ultimately I found out that pride is just a hollow feeling. While anger and depression can have awful real life consequences, it is just not worth it. No specific situation that sparked this. Just a realization I had one day. People really aren't thinking about you, they're thinking about themselves. I worked retail, and then started to notice that same glossy-eyed self-centeredness from customers permeate almost all my other interactions. 2. 